Would these components be enough to upgrade this guy? Hi guys, so today we'll be starting off with the Dell Optiplex 790 here with um, i5 2400, Sandy Bridge, 4 gigs of RAM, 320 gig hard drive. And we'll also be upgrading this old PC with WD Green SATA SSD, 120 gigs, 8 gigs of RAM. And we'll also be putting in a new graphic card, GT 1030. Along with these products, we'll also be reapplying the thermal paste. So the prices of the, these things that I got was, this um, is the desktop variant, not small form factor. This was $100, this was $30, this was $50, this was $10 this was 130 now let's get into installing so to open this we just put the latch take it off now let's start off from reapplying the thermal paste so let's take off the cooler remember to take it off in a cross pattern so you can release the pressure evenly Okay, and you won't want to secure clip right here, you pull it out. There. Now, I've already taken out the th old thermal paste. You can watch other videos to see how you do that. Now, let's just apply this. Okay. Now... Let's put the cooler back on. No. No. Also remember, you also have to put it back together in a cross pattern as well. So you can put down the pressure evenly. And don't screw it too tight because it might put too much pressure on the CPU. So maybe just screw it down 70 or 80 percent. Now let's go on with the RAM. Now with this RAM, you can either put your stick of RAM and add it into there, which I'm gonna do to make it 12 gigs of RAM. But before you do that, please check if the other RAM is the same speed as your new RAM, because, so it can work at the same speed. Because or else if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it'll run at the lower speed it can for both. So DIM 1 and 2 are already full, so let's put in to number 3. Line up the notches, press firmly, you hear the clicks, and there. Now we're going to install the SSD. Now we're going to install it here. I'm going to just grab some double-sided tape. I'm gonna tape it in there, put on the behinds, there, another one. There, and we just tape it on and then remove it. There. Now let's stick it on there. There we go. Now you just take this power, SATA power, you just plug it in and you can take the SATA cable from the optical drive and plug it in there. 
and one quick note the optical drive this system once you load it up to windows it only supports two SATA connections so if you choose hard drive and SSD the DVD drive will not work but if you choose the SSD and DVD drive they'll work both and now let's unbox the graphics card so we take it out it'll come in here like this here take the tape off you can remove it now it will come with a low profile bracket I've already changed it out as you see here but just change it out you just remove the screw and remove these two things from the DVI now we do this Remove these brackets as much as you need. So I need to remove. So I remove two. This might fall out, but just put it back in. There. And there. You just leave there. And then we want to put it on the top slot. The PCIe X16 top slot. Wait. I forgot to remove this. No. Okay. Now try to not try to not to hit the motherboard with this part. It's will it damage the motherboard. Just put it in. Oops! I put two out. Let me just put one of these in. Okay, just secure that back in and we'll get to installing the drivers and let me install Windows and we'll be back. Now let's go ahead and press the power button and start hitting F2 right away. Hit it as much as you can, as fast as you can. Okay, it enters into the BIOS. Now let's go to boot sequence right there second thing under general then here you want to disable everything except your ssd so on, only let it show tick the ssd now also press here and press apply and now exit now if you've already installed the windows on the ssd it should boot right into windows right now we have booted into windows now let's do 3d mark first and let's run time spy when i'll run this and then when the results come i'll come back to you so okay our test is done with time spy we got a score of 1179 it's not great but as you can see here the cpu is doing fine it's just a graphics card but this is a very intense benchmark so it's not too bad as you can see mainly here the main bottleneck here is the graphics card here because you can see most of the time it's 100 percent load most of the time but the here you can see the G CPU is doing fine 3.2 gigahertz and blah 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 but the graphics card is not doing that great the temperatures were certainly not too high so it's doing good in there frame rate as I said this is a very intense benchmark so now let's say goodbye to that and let's run Cinebench now when the results are out we'll come back to you again okay our results are in for Cinebench now for multi-core we got 1627 points not too bad single core 606 point it's bad but it's not too bad because this is a second gen i5 so you can't expect too much now we're gonna play a game that every PC should be able to play we're gonna play some Minecraft Okay, we are in Minecraft. Let's play and let's see how much FPS we get. World generation, not too fast, not too slow. 
not too bad here. Not too bad at all. This is pretty quick. Hopefully this goes well. Let's continue. Okay, FPS not too. Okay, FPS we are at. Where is the FPS thing? We are at. Where is it? You don't. Ah, yeah, we're at 60 FPS. Wait, let me just get you know, to options, settings, max FPS. And there. Why is it I'm only at 60 FPS? Anyways, let's cheat. Anyways, let's go into creative. Okay, now let's test out some liquids. These are flowing, so liquids. Okay, how much FPS do we get now? It's definitely slowing down. This is this is really playable. Yeah. You can perfectly play this. This is fine. Yeah, this is this is very good. Like this FPS is perfect for Minecraft. No, not perfect, but definitely playable. So we're averaging around 40 FPS now. It doesn't seem to lag at all, so I think this is fine. Let's jump to the conclusion. In summary, this is a very good setup. This PC, if you want to go this route, please, um, if you can look for the i7 versions and don't go first gen, so I would recommend the 90-20, or 790-3090, or don't go on first gen Intel, that's the exception. And for, I would recommend this for people who really want to get into PCs because this is cheap and they can learn about it for cheap. And it also gives quite a bit of performance as well if you're gonna run like games that don't demand too much this is gonna be fine so yeah this is really good I think we have achieved success and don't forget to subscribe like share and goodbye for now